one other question that she asked, and a lot of people ask this question, and I think it's a good question, so we're going to also address it really quick. So she goes, I'm on board with many things. There are still questions I have, but I can definitely see why there are so many flat earthers. The question her husband gave her, however, is, if it's true, does it change how I live my life? For me, I have to say no. It would be nice if it's true for the government to acknowledge and stop charades. However, I find it really hard, especially knowing someone that works for NASA and his job is to get new packages ready, yada, yada, yada. So again, what difference does it make? Like I said, that's a great question. This is something that is not an easy answer because of the magnitude of what we're talking about here. How it will change your life, first of all, when you understand it, is dramatic, to say the least. Will it change you from having to go to your job every day and the things that you typically do every day? No, but when this knowledge becomes more mainstream, and these agencies are starting to be held accountable and you understand that they're all participating in this not just the united states government not just nasa but china russia india all of them have space programs they all have the same symbolism they're all doing the exact same thing to their citizenry and the first thing you have to understand about this is that the deception goes all the way to the top and when i say all the way to the top you have to kind of get rid of the notion that the people at the very highest levels are working together. The people that control the world are not, we're not against each other. There was never any such thing really as the Cold War. We're really not enemies with anybody else. This is all a facade that's being brought on for our benefit. But the people that are in power that have all the money, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Morgans, the on and on and on, these are the people that literally run the central banking system, which of course has permeated the entire world and any country that tries to get away from it their leaders are quickly assassinated it goes on and on and on so you have to understand conspiracies a little bit to understand the magnitude of this deception so why would they do this why are they trying to hide the fact that we are on an infinite plane uh, or on a flat earth rather than a ball well the answer to that there's a lot of answers to that but in my personal opinion if you isolate people into the idea that they're on a blue marble that's in the middle of a universe that is really insignificant and there's thousands or millions and billions of other worlds and possibly other civilizations, that makes most people think that we are insignificant and that we did actually come about as some sort of an accident. Now, when people believe that, their minds are much more malleable into being given the idea that there is no God, there is no creator, that all of this is just some sort of random happenstance. And because of that, that also gives the controllers this fertile soil to build other deceptions on. And it's all about control. Remember, it's not about money. Money is irrelevant. They print the money. Money is just something that you and I agree has value, but it really is just pieces of paper, right? <laughs> These people are printing the money. They can print money all day long if they want to, and they do. <laughs> so it's not about that. And it's not just about power either. It's about total control, mental, physical, spiritual, every way, shape, form possible. And to wrap your head around this type of deception, whether you're religious or not, if you're religious, then you understand that this is Satan's plan all along. If you're not religious, then you need to understand that People are power hungry and they will do anything to gain and maintain this type of control. So I've kind of ranted on this a lot. So John and Jaron, if you would add into this for my relative and kind of elaborate on what I've said. I would just add that a lot of people don't realize it, but really the fundamental cornerstone of nihilism and really nihilism is sort of the most profound version of atheism. Really, atheism is probably the most popular, quote unquote, religion, at least in America and probably worldwide. There's more atheists at heart because of one simple fact, and that is this whole Copernican principle or this Big Bang Theory universe where the entire planet and even the galaxy are like a mere speck of dust and completely insignificant in the grand scheme of things. So from that perspective, if the Earth itself is just nothing special, 
in the grand scheme of things, then how could anything that we do in our lives be of remote consequence whatsoever? And so this whole mindset, again, is sort of the founding cornerstone of atheism and ultimately nihilism. However, when people realize that the Big Bang is a load of theoretical bollocks, then it really changes this entire foundation of the world's perspective of this ultimately nihilist viewpoint. And so even if you don't consider yourself religious, that's probably because you've been affected by this culture that is ultimately nihilist. Yep, well said. And I think so obvious when you look at, and Bob, you put it perfectly, that just what the money system has done to this country and, and to the world, really, uh, in the book, Why a Bankrupt America, it said that the Federal Reserve pays the Bureau of Engraving and Printing approximately $23 for each 1,000 notes printed. So $10,100 notes, which is a million dollars, cost the Federal Reserve $230. So they then secure a pledge of collateral equal to the face value of the U.S. government. And that collateral is our land, labor, assets. And then it's collected by their agents, who are the IRS, not our agents. And by authorizing the Fed to regulate and create money, and thus inflation, Basically, Congress gave private banks power to create profits at will. That's what they do. It's all about making profits for themselves. And you have to remember how big of a conspiracy this is. This isn't talking about just the JFK thing or isn't talking about just 9-11. It's on an umbrella kind of system to where it is the biggest deception that there is. It actually exposes every other deception and nothing else brings down the power of the elite because it really exposes education, science, the economy, television, museums, universities, think of all the things that have been fooled. I feel worse for the people that are out there building satellites, the people that are out there actually working for these space agencies, the people out there teaching in schools as professors, because they would all come to the conclusion eventually, once this gets out, that they've all been contributing to the lie. And that's got to be the worst feeling that there is. And that's why you have a hard time with the Neil deGrasse or a Bill Nye, these guys ever even considering that the earth might not be what they were taught because they understand if it's not, then their entire lives have been about promoting the lie. They are tool pieces for the elite, for the lie system. And it really destroys everything. And I'm a perfect example, John, of what you were talking about. When I realized religion had some things in it that didn't quite fit with my reality and I was done with it, I realized it was many lies there. I popped out of that and the one place that's there with open arms calling for you saying, we tell nothing but the truth. We're all about facts and evidence is science. And I went there with my arms open, ready to embrace them and said, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you're here because over there, I was just getting lied to left and right. And now I know science is the place to go. Now, thank goodness I'm into research and things that I, I wanted to know everything about it. I, I wasn't comfortable in just saying, well, now I realize religion's a lie. I'm just gonna be scientific and promote science and just say the word science when anybody talks to me. It would have been really easy. I could have paraded myself around and been really Mr. Smart Guy and, and been able to debate Christians and would have been really easy for me. But instead, I decided to look into it. I wanted to know why is evolution real? Where's the evidence? Why are these things facts? How do they know the age of the earth? And the more and more I looked into it and the more and more I asked these so-called science backers, the more I realized it was another religion. And that's ultimately, and I was, I'll admit it, an atheist for probably six months. And thank goodness I looked into that science. But I notice out there all these other guys who are just making these debunk videos or calling us crazy. The difference between me and them is that they don't want to research it or they don't know how to research past the deception layer. I mean, you have to understand this is the biggest deception ever. It can never be let out. So if you're looking for, well, why does Jaron say this? And you go look up Google or something like that and you just search it one time and don't try and look at any other sources besides the mainstream sources, then you shouldn't be surprised that you're gonna get the exact answer you're looking for. That's only gonna confirm what the elitists or what these people who are fooling us from the top down, what they want you to find. And then they go and make videos claiming these are evidence that we're wrong. And they say, well, these guys didn't even research it. If they would have looked it up one time, they would have found it. That's crazy talk. If you think we don't know the mainstream reasoning behind it, that we don't need to bring that up to people because anybody like you can go look it up and find that exact answer. That's not doing research. And this is a deception on the highest level that you need to go and dig deeper and look at different bits and pieces and put it together and come up with your own explanation. Because if you're just gonna take what mainstream tells you and believe it, 
then go watch Fox News and enjoy what the mainstream wants you to enjoy. That's the way that they operate. So I just think when it comes down to people asking, how does it affect my life? No, I guess it depends on you. If you don't care that you've been lied to about everything from school, from kindergarten on, everything that you were taught in school was meant to get your mind into a certain frame of reference, to make you think about the world a certain way, to make you think about your parents, and to make you think about your friends, and to make you think about your government, all in a prescribed way to make the rich get richer and make you into a wage slave. If you don't care that that happened, if you're happy going to your nine to five job and you're comfortable in your belief about who your creator is, then it doesn't affect your life. For a lot of us, that is a pretty big deal. For me, it looks like 35 years of my life was completely wasted on a false existence that someone else decided to sell me. You know, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life exposing it because I don't think it's right. It's not the way you treat other people. It's not the way you treat other beings. We all have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And somebody just said that. They told us that, but then behind the scenes, they made sure that they kept us unhappy and that we weren't free and that they were the ones who got to enjoy the good life while we worked for them. Yes, well said. Yep. So ultimately, to get back to the question, how will it change your daily life? Well, until it's actually exposed, not a whole lot because we're still slaves to this very same system. We still have to go to our jobs. We still have to pay the bills, yada, yada, yada. However, think about when this idea catches on and the awareness of the level of deception that we are kept under. And I think a lot of people are waking up to it. You know, 9-11, you know, being the fraud that it is, Sandy Hook being a fraud, on and on and on. But at some point, we're hoping that this is going to hit critical mass. And when it does, then all of a sudden, these institutions that are taking billions and trillions of dollars from us to simply enslave us, to keep us going to work every day and never having enough money or time and, and other countries that are starving, have no medical attention. And in fact, there's active campaigns to kill these people off. And this is a well-known agenda. But all this aside, when this all goes away, then we're talking about an entirely different world. Then we're talking about the kind of world that would be, I dare say, more utopian. And that isn't always necessarily a good thing either, but let's just say that it would be a whole lot better than what we have now. If people understood that we are special, that there is a creator, and that really, when people come to this realization, we will start becoming more aware of the value of other humans and human life. And we don't look at people as, well, just because they're different from us, then they're wrong and they're funny and they're, they're weird. We see each other as brothers and we see each other as related and family and we start respecting each other on a level that is due to everyone. And when that happens and we get rid of the governments that are enslaving us and the people above the governments that are controlling them, then all of a sudden we start looking at a society where we can start improving upon ourselves. We can start making our own technologies that will benefit humanity instead of the elite usurping all these technologies and using it for themselves against us. Like we can have unlimited free power and, and you know, there's just so many things. I mean, you could go on and on and on and on about this. And uh, you know, many people have researched this, but at that point, everything changes. Absolutely everything changes because we no longer are living in a slave world. We're living in a truly free world where everybody is sovereign and everybody has much more respect for other selves, other people. So that's pretty much the answer to that question. So it is a big thing. It really is. You can't just brush it off as saying, eh, what difference does it make? It's not going to change anything. Au contraire, not only will it change things, it will change things in an entirely, it'll bring us to an entirely new paradigm, an entirely new way of life. And I'm sure that many people would much rather live in something that would be considered more utopian than what we're at right now, which is an enslaved system. Yeah, everything's indeed a commodity and we call ourselves a system that's governed by essentially capitalism although I guess you could call it more aptly corporate fascism, but we'll call it capitalism. Even that is a system run by greed. And I think that that's pretty much an ass backwards way to run a society. 
And really, this whole idea of capitalism and greed as the driving force behind our society really does stem from this atheistic viewpoint that's been going on for the last at least 100 years in full steam ahead. Yep, absolutely. so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time